it is important for people to have time to relax. This is clear to everyone, which is why a minimum holiday entitlement of four weeks applies throughout the EU. This is also the case in Germany. Every employee is entitled to four weeks paid leave per year. It doesn't matter whether you work full time for 40 hours five days a week or only clean a private household for two hours once a week. Every employee has at least four weeks paid vacation per year. Every employee whether full-time or part-time, apprentice, manager or working student. The only exception is home workers, Heimarbeiter, which is not to be confused with home office. Home workers are, for example, people who sew door closes or assemble ballpoint pens at home who receive their fabric or individual parts from the company and later return the finished product. There is a corresponding law And this would be noted in the employment contract. These home workers then receive a 9.1% third charge on their wages because they do not actually receive any vacation. If you are subject to the Heimarbeitsgesetz Home Workers Act, you know that and that would be extremely rare. The year in Germany is always counted from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. For those who think this is normal, I would like to say that in France the company's fiscal year is also used as a basis, or in Austria the year always starts from the employee's starting date. Most companies give more vacation days. On average, you get 24 days vacation in agriculture and forestry and 25 days in the hospitality industry, the public sector education, energy and water supply and finance services are best off with 30 days. Underage employees are also entitled to more vacation days up to a minimum of 30 days. A few years ago the Deutsche Bahn offered its employees more vacation days in lieu of a salary increase. This was accepted by many employees. In fact, some companies offer more vacation days or a reducing in weekly working hours instead of a salary increase. As a vacation entitlement is valid for one year, the vacation must always be taken within the year. However, there may be a difference between the statutory minimum leave and additional leave if there are special clauses in the employment contract. In principle, all vacation must be taken within the year. Leave requests are typically submitted on a special form or within a special computer program. Depending on the company, this can also be an application by email or simply a request to the line manager. Written applications or those in a system have the advantage that in case of doubt, you have written proof that the leave was submitted or approved. There are often also company agreements between the works council and the company management regarding vacation. For example, it may be agreed that there are certain company closing times, like between Christmas and New Year, during which all employees must take vacation. Or that a vacation request that has not been processed for two weeks is automatically approved. Once a vacation request has been approved, both sides can rely on this. This means that neither the employee can simply withdraw the leave on their own initiative, nor can the employer simply cancel the leave. If something has changed in the employee's vacation planning, he or she must ask the employer whether he or she may reschedule the already approved vacation. In the same way, the employer must ask the employee whether they can perhaps postpone leave that has already been approved. The employer can only cancel leave on its own initiative in an emergency that threatens the existence of the company. For example, if it would no longer be possible to continue working due to numerous illnesses in a department. The employer must of course reimburse any cost incurred because the leave has to be cancelled or because the employee has to return from leave too early. 
it is extremely rare for an employer to cancel leave in a lawful manner. The employer must also ensure a fair distribution of vacation requests. For example, if everyone wants to go on vacation during the summer vacations, but the employer needs a certain number of employees over the summer, then the employees who have school-age children generally have preference. If there are too many of them, preference must be given to other families in subsequent years. Employees should take as much vacation as possible in a row, but at least two weeks at a time once a year. However, sometimes there's also something like a Urlaubssperre vacation ban. The fact that no one from the workforce is allowed to go on vacation. This currently applies to many police forces, for example, due to the European football championships. Of course, the police officers will then make up the leave later. If an employee applies for vacation several times a year but is always refused, the employer must give this employee the opportunity to take the vacation before the end of the year. However, this must not leave only a period requested by the employer. In principle, the employee decides when they want to take a vacation. The employer needs a good reason for not approving a request. If the leave cannot be taken in full in the current year, it is often possible to take the remaining leave until March 31st on the following year. However, if the employee does not submit a leave application in time, the remaining leave may be expired. It is not possible to pay out vacation, at least its statutory minimum vacation, during ongoing employment. Vacation is for recreation purposes and must therefore be taken. Excess vacation can only be paid out in the event of resignation if it can no longer be taken. The entitlement to vacation already arises during probation period. In the first six months, however, only one twelfth per month. Proportions are rounded up from full days. If the employee works full-time for three months with 30 days vacation a year, he or she will receive a proportion 30 divided by 12 equal to 2.1 days and 2.1 days times 3 equals 7.5 days, what is 8 days for 3 months. For 4 months it would then be 2.5 times 4, what is 10 days. After 6 months you then have the full vacation entitlement. The employee would therefore be entitled to 30 days in the 7th month. If an employee who has been with the company for a few years took a long vacation of 4 weeks or 20 days in the spring, but then resigns and leaves at the end of June, they would possibly only be entitled to 15 days vacation instead of 30. In this case, however, the employee's salary for the remaining 5 days may not be reduced. Conversely, the employee may not receive a double entitlement. The old employer therefore issues a certificate stating how many vacation days the employee has already taken. In our example, this would be 20 days. If the new employer were to grant only 20 days, the new employee would no longer have any vacation entitlement for the rest of the year. Vacation means relaxing and not work. Employees take this very serious. Only a small proportion of German employees can be reached while on vacation. Over two-thirds of German employees never check their work emails while on vacation. There is no reason or obligation for a normal employee to do so. Some companies even have a policy and an out-of-office message stating that all emails received during vacation are automatically deleted. This has the advantage that employees returning from vacation do not have to read through hundreds of emails, most of which are out of date. However, if your company does not have this regulation, you should not simply delete the emails after your vacation, but you have to work through these emails and process them afterwards. If you fall ill while on vacation, the sick days 
which may be confirmed by a doctor, will be credited again. After all, vacation is for recreation and illness is not recreation. Of course, vacation is paid. The payment is called Urlaubsentgelt, vacation remuneration, because normal pay is also called Entgelt remuneration. Anyone who receives a salary simply continues to receive the salary. However, if you are paid an hourly wage or earn bonuses as part of shift work, you will usually also receive the bonuses during your vacation. Only very rarely can a collective agreement deviate from the mandatory payment of shift bonuses, for example in the sugar industry. Otherwise, the average of the last 13 weeks is usually calculated and then pay out pro rata. Some companies also pay a special vacation payment, the Urlaubsgeld, not to be confused with the Urlaubsentgeld, vacation remuneration just explained. 46% of employees receive vacation payment and three quarters of employees and companies with collective bargaining agreements. This can be a special payment, like the Christmas bonus, but in the summer, or an additional payment for every day of vacation taken. In this case, the employer pays the employee a little more money than normal, so that they can afford to take a vacation. The amount is often in relation to the normal salary, and is often half a salary. You have to recover during your vacation. For example, it is not permitted to work for another employer during this time. On the other hand, leisure activities are the employee's own business, whether they visit museums, fan bars on the beach or do survival trailing alone in the jungle, it's up to them. Restrictions on the destination or activity are not permitted. Of course, it may be the case that special secret holders are not allowed to travel to a certain country, but this is extremely rare. Vacations are a normal part of working life in Germany and every employer plans vacations accordingly. What are you doing on your next vacation? Why don't you write it in the comments? If there is something wrong with your vacation entitlement, check your contract. If the minimum leave is not granted, then talk to the Works Council or the Trade Union first. And if asking your employer or the HR department doesn't help, there have already been court cases dealing with this issue. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.